by the way, uh, this microphone was switched off. So <laughs> this microphone is it. just for sure. <laughs> it's, it's empty. It's yeah. just plastic. Yeah, There's exactly, nothing yeah. in it. It's a, do you only get dummy cameras? That's just a dummy microphone. Yeah. $50 <laughs> cheap rubber. I don't know who you are, but welcome to the Irish Photography Podcast. Sit back, relax, and listen about cameras, gear, settings, stories, and all things photography. Join Darren on Ireland's Best Photography Podcast. Let's go. You're very welcome to episode 138 of the Irish Photography Podcast. My name is Darren, I'm your host, and I'm joined by somebody who's been on the podcast a number of times before, and I'm really, really excited to welcome him back. So welcome back to the Irish Photography Podcast, Gavin Hardcastle. How are you getting on, buddy? Oh, I'm all right, mate. I'm not too bad. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back on here. And uh, hopefully I'm not going to embarrass myself like I did last time, you know. Well, hang on. I want to set some ground rules in place anyway here now, first and foremost, right? right none, yeah. of this, none of this shameless plugging of this book on this place now, okay? Let's try and keep it book free because you have been quite good at being dropping it in here and dropping it in there. So nothing on this podcast about your book, okay? Well, it's been a really good interview, Darren. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll be seeing you then, because that's all I've got to talk about, you know. There's literally nothing else. Literally all right, nothing. I, make, I, I make a deal with you, right? We'll try and yeah. avoid it, but I, here's what I'll do, right? To try and help you kind of avoid by mentioning the book as often as you can. Will I play a little bit of a game? Yeah. Every time you mention the book, I'm going to give you one strike. And if you mention the book more than five times, You'll have to commit to give me a book that I can give away to one of our fantastic, beautiful listeners. How about that? Oh, that sounds fair. I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll be getting the book, but we'll see. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a nice little give. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. And, you know, look, I alluded to you, obviously, you, you've been on the podcast a couple of times before. So this is the third time back. So maybe three times the charm. But it's a year since you were last on, I think, actually. It was just at the start of everything in, in March of last year. So... Where have you gone uh, exploring around the beautiful Vancouver Island since well, you were last that, on? Since I was last on, all that I have been able to do is, yeah, obviously Vancouver Island and um, a little bit of the Canadian Rockies last summer, back when we were allowed to leave Vancouver mm -hmm. Island. It's the perfect shot and it's just begun to happen, is this light on this peak. So I want this light to maybe light a beautiful stripe on these peaks here as if the whole mountain has been dipped in lava. And then we'll see what it does to those clouds in the peaks, which obviously all of that absolute deliciousness will get reflected in this flat, calm mirror lake. Honestly, I, I couldn't ask for more. Absolutely tremendous. It may not happen very often, but when it does, this is the moment that we live for. We're now allowed again, actually. Like to, yesterday, I think we were we were told that we were allowed to leave Brilliant. this tiny Brilliant. little island. Uh, yeah, strange. I don't remember committing a crime, but uh, <laughs> there you go. I, I was under lock and key. But yeah, so now we can leave again. So, but uh, to be quite honest with you, in that year, I hadn't really managed to see that many new places. But what I did manage to do is get better shots at some of the locations that I've been going to for years. In fact, I managed to get some really nice uh, winter storm wave shots, which uh, I really didn't think I was going to get anything that good, but uh, I got lucky, got some beautiful conditions. So, you know, as far as somewhere to be trapped, Vancouver Island's about as good as it gets, really. I feel quite lucky. I agree with you. You know, I mean, we were trapped here in Ireland and Ireland is such a beautiful place to be as well. But I do envy you on a lot of the, the I suppose, diversity that you do have on Vancouver Island. And like I, I did see a number of times as well, watching your videos and such like that, that you were out quite a lot in some beautiful areas as well. But it was during those videos, actually, that I noticed that you started to kind of drop in a few hints about what we won't mention. Well, I mean, they're really subtle, obviously. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely try not to overdo it, you know, and I, I do get a lot of comments on my videos, people saying just how tastefully subtle 
my marketing is, you know, yes. and so yes. I've I've really practiced and honed that that craft. And uh, in fact, I've got a new I've, I've invented a new term. I think I've invented something completely new, and I call it I call it skit vertising. Yeah, come on, let me show you this. Are you ready? Yeah. It's a copy of Chasing All with Gavin and Castle. Oh, another one. What's this? <laughs> There's a link in the description. And it's basically this 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 function whereby you you market a product um, by making it into part of a funny story and narrative. And if you do it well, people won't hate you for trying to sell them something. Whereas mm -hmm. as soon as you say, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, they're hitting that skip button mm -hmm. and just slide into the next bit where it's gone. So I, I, I've, I've coined the phrase skip advertising. Maybe I'm not the first ever, but um, I've, I've definitely, I think I've perfected the, the, the technique it well, I'm well. selling a lot of books anyway, put it that way. Oh, oh. That's one tick. There we go. Oh, yeah. <sighs> well, look, you know what? I think I really enjoyed you on the uh, skit for tizing, and I think it's actually quite interesting because you mentioned about people getting annoyed. Speaking of annoyed, how's Uncle Grumpy doing? <laughs> Have you seen his video that came out today? I haven't watched it yet, no. Uh, Adam's been doing a brilliant job of every time I mention my book, in his videos because you know he doesn't really feature me in his videos that much even though we're uh -huh. always shooting together and he's pretty much always in all of my uh -huh. videos but yeah for some reason i don't i don't show up <laughs> it is all that much it's weird isn't it but uh, i did manage to show up for a brief a brief appearance a brief cameo in today's adam gibbs video and just as i was mentioning my book he switched it for his book and just dropped his name in there, which I thought was quite funny. Hello. This is a perfect opportunity to uh, introduce this amazing new book. Apparently it's a bestseller. <laughs> uh, it's called Quiet Light by Adam Gibbs. Link in the description below. So he's <laughs> he's doing his own little uh, skitvertising as well. He's, he's piggybacking off my my skitvertising for his own skitvertising. So. What? That's he did funny. one, yeah. He did one, I think, where you were. Um, it was a skit that you were doing where he was asleep in the back of his uh van and you walked over with your book. And I knew it was your book, but when he edited it, he edited a picture of his book over your book as well. And I think, it. I think, it, you know, for every every time he does that, I think he, sh he should be given away one of his books as well. You know, he should be, yeah. he should be made to pay for that. So, should be, yeah, should be. Yeah. Should be. And it's, a fine, it's a fine book, it's a fine book, by the way. Sorry, I, well, he, I should. I, should I, I mean, I, I gave him. I gave him free copy of my book, but he didn't give me one of his. I still, I still yet to get a copy. Stingy bugger. Uh, and tell me on, on the trips that you've done there, like you mentioned, that you managed to get some new shots and of different areas and different seasons. Did you get many bangers during the last year in Vancouver Island? I I got quite a few bangers, which you'll remember from my best of twenty twenty video, which went out at Christmas. Um, I, I don't know if I've had, I've had maybe one, maybe one banger since then. And I've been working really hard this year <laughs> yeah. to try and get some shots, but I've just, I've just not had much luck in terms of the light, but, uh, next week and, you know, right through until late September, we should be able to get up into the mountain regions because the snow will have melted. So Sweet. we're going to get high Alpine activity and maybe some wildflowers and some, some windswept peaks so i'm hoping that Sweet. this summer is going to open up some some options for us and we'll get some big bangers absolutely and i think you know within that have you one photograph of the last year that's your favorite Ooh, that's a tricky one is that I know. um it's like I, saying I really, your favorite cat yeah <laughs> oh, I, I know, well i know which one it is but they're both in here right now so i can't say you can't say no you can't say yeah, no no <laughs> no, there was this one shot of um, the storm. It was, this, it was this wave, these crashing waves that were coming into this landscape in Euclid on the west coast. <clears throat> and I just, it was everything that I wanted. It was just that brief moment. And I did, I did a whole video about it. But yeah, it was like, I think it was seven times 
seven times I'd, I'd made that journey to get this shot. I remember the video, yeah. yeah. And it's so frustrating, but then when you finally get it, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it was, you, you forget about all those miserable days, you know, and it's just all worth it. And, and so that's probably the shot that I'm most proud of in the last 12 months. But, you know, the thing is, and I bet I'm not the only photographer that feels like this, is you might have a favourite for a while. Mm. And you'll go back through your, your back catalogue. Maybe in two years' time, I might, I might be looking at an image that I shot this year, and I maybe just didn't process it right, or I didn't crop it right, or something wasn't quite perfect. And you might see it in a different way in a few years with fresh eyes, and you do a little a new rendition of it, and all of a sudden that can become your favourite shot. I've done that many times before where you pull this old little pearl Mm -hmm. out of a, a hard drive that's long forgotten. I think that's one of the benefits of been doing this for years is you do you do have these little treasure troves hidden away on shelves that have just got images on that you've mm -hmm. completely forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And then, because I sometimes have it where, because I've posted so many images online over the years, you get people contacting you saying, oh, I'd like to get a print of this or a, a, a magazine or something wants something. Not, not very often, but sometimes. So you, I'll dig through my old hard drives. And as you're digging through the old hard drives, other things pop up. You're like, oh, I remember that, mm -hmm. which is not the thing that you were looking for. But you, you dig into this old folder and you're like, bloody hell, that was, that was actually a good shot. Why didn't I even post that shot? So then, then you go down the rabbit hole of, of pearl diving, right? And... And you start pulling out all these uh, long forgotten bangers. So it's such a, it's such an odd question. You're like, which images were your favorites? You know, and ask me in five years and I'll tell you then. Well, it's interesting you say that, right? Because particularly I noticed with me anyway, from a seascape point of view is that when I'm editing my images, I'm looking and I'm looking at the waves and I might be looking for a particular type of wave and I go, okay, that's the one that I'm picking out. But then when I go back on it at a later stage, there's a different sequence of waves. And I go, Jesus, how did I even overlook that? But it's because I was actually focused on one type of wave that I edited. But there's so many other ones within that as well. And I think that's what I love about having your back catalog of images, because you'll go back and you'll find that gem that you've overlooked. Yeah. And it just, it just slaps you in the face and you kind of go, what was I thinking that I didn't even do anything further with that and then it's kind of rewarding because you can go back into that and you can refeel and re reimagine everything that you experienced when you were taking that at the time as well which is great well that's what we love about photography right i mean it's it's reliving that moment it, it's it's experiencing afresh that that moment in time that you were bloody lucky to have experienced and so i think that's why people it's the miracle of photography i think that's why people since it was invented, have loved photography because it's just this perfect moment in time or, or often sometimes a terrible moment in time, historic. But for us, usually it's that perfect moment in time. You can look back on it and you can just experience everything. I've said this in, uh, I think I've said this in an interview before, but it's I have this weird ability to look at an image that I shot years ago and I can actually remember what I was feeling, what I was going through, what was the story of my life on that particular day. So, you know, if I look at an image from, from Scotland 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I, can, I can clearly remember, oh, shit, that was the day that I was late for Christmas dinner. And I was kind of stressing about getting back in time and the roads were icy. So I was rushing, but then I had to slow down and rushing and then I had to slow. And whatever it is that you were experiencing that day, whether you were happy or sad, whether you were stressed or relaxed or whatever it is, it, it's, it, it puts me right back in that mental space. And, and I, it's all, I wouldn't say it's like total recall because I couldn't remember a conversation. But I can, it, I, I have total recall of the emotions and, and of the, the feeling that I had at the time that I took that shot. Gavin, speaking of going back over lots of images, I'm sure, you know, over the time when you were compiling all the images for your book, you must have really had a good time doing that. So, like, is there anything that you've taken, I suppose, over the last number of years that you were looking at and went, that's got to go in the book straight away, even before you were thinking about getting the book? Are doing the oh, you mean the, the book Chasing All with Chasing Gavin Hart? Actually, <laughs> I should have a copy of it. Where, hang on. I have a Let copy me, here for you. 
Oh, there you go. There, there you go. go. I have yeah. a copy here. It's, it's a fantastic <laughs> book. Look at the beauty of that book. The amount of hours that went into designing it. It looks absolutely fantastic. So oh, that maybe, is maybe we should talk about the book, actually, I think. Will we actually talk about since I have Oh, it go on, then. I mean, it would be a know. shame not to really, wouldn't yeah. it? Do you know what I mean? Go All on, right. then. Yeah. So the giveaway is unlocked now, right? So you actually have to give away a copy of the book as yeah. uh, a prize to one of our listeners, right? So All right. So how do we decide who which listener gets it, then? I think what we should do is we should do a random um draw when you look at you can do random pickers on the internet so yeah. what i'll do is with this we'll do this on video i'll put it up on youtube and here's what we'll do for somebody to be able to win a copy of this fantastic book chasing oh gavin hardcastle all they have to do is to comment below and how many images are in the book simple yeah but i don't know how many <laughs> I'll count them. <laughs> All right. So, so I can just say how many there are now, right? Yeah. And, and then if they comment, that means that they were they were watching, they were paying attention. Yeah. Maybe you'd keep that till the very end, so we have oh, to make them watch through. it more. Yeah. The whole okay, way through. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's yeah. let's find out the fantastic story behind this incredible book. So, Gavin, we've already said, you know, look, um, the name of your book is Chasing Awe. I think it's a fantastic name and it's really really catchy and it also is intriguing because you want to find out more how did you come up with the name for the book well the name of the book is actually chasing all with gavin hardcastle oh, and the reason okay, the reason why i did that was because um i i just came up with the title chasing all because that is what we do right that is when i'm out shooting and i'm hiking up a mountain or I'm driving for hours I'm chasing that sense of awe that we feel yep. when we stand on a mountaintop and we just go, wow, you know, that's what I'm always chasing. So I figured that was appropriate. So I called the book Chasing Awe. And then I thought at the very last minute, oh, I wonder if anyone else has done a book called Chasing Awe. Okay. And I found one that was like a poetry or self-help book or something. So I thought, well, I'll change the title to Chasing All with Gavin Hack. So then, and then it's different enough that you don't have to worry about lawsuits, I hope. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, one long title and it's a completely different genre. So I would hope, please don't sue. Please, <laughs> I, I didn't make that, that much money. Yeah. So no, no, don't, don't sue. sue. Don't. Well, I mean, look, unless somebody else is called Gavin Hardcastle and they've called a book called Chasing All, then you can sue them. Because I think Ooh. by putting in your name at the very end of it as well, what it also does is that it's not just chasing awe, it's chasing awe with Gavin Hardcastle. So, there you go. You know right. what I mean? So yeah. it's actually, it's a double, double whammy of goodness. A double whammy. I love a good double whammy, yes. Yeah, yes. of goodness, yeah. 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 And, and the book, I mean, <clears throat> I would I would reckon that every landscape photographer that is kind of working either professionally or semi-professionally and, and puts their heart and soul into their art I would guess that every every one of them would love eventually to to publish a, a book one day of of mm -hmm. some of their best work. So that was something that I always wanted to do, you know, right from when I first started. And uh, it it was just everything just kind of fell into place last year. Um, you know, Tom put his book out and and, and he had great success with that. <clears throat> so Tom gave me some advice on on how to get going with it. Mm -hmm. And then, I, you know, I, I started the process of, of contacting uh, Canadian book companies and uh, finally found one that, that was, you know, capable of making a high quality product. And off we went. And I thought it would be quite quick. It wasn't. It took it took forever. So um, I, I managed to sell a whole bunch of pre-orders around Christmas. And then I was finished. I was, I was finished just after Christmas, ready to, to print. Uh, but then the print company got back to me and said, oh, well, it's probably going to be, uh, you know, March before we can get these, oh. these out. Or, or I think they, were, they printed them February, late February. And then I got the books on, I think it was March 1st. Mm -hmm. And they were all garbage. Wow. They were all terrible. And it, it wasn't that the, the quality of, of the... The manufacturer was wrong. It, it was that something must have gone wrong in their either the printer that they were using or 
th there was something that fell apart in the system that they were using. And basically all of the colors came out consistently wrong. So wow. everything had this kind of weird yellowy green color cast to it that was not present in the proofs. So all the proofs that they sent me were absolutely perfect. I, I was absolutely stunned by the proofs. And I, I couldn't tell them enough times, these proofs are fantastic. If this is what the book looks like, I'll be delighted. And the books came, all 2,000 of them, they're all shrink-wrapped, they're all in these packed into these boxes, and every single one of them was wrong. And wow. I was just, I was absolutely devastated because not only had I done everything right, and I was excited to get my, you know, when you when you get that yeah. book, that very first book, yeah, and you open it up, and it's like, oh, oh, <sighs> this is crap. Yeah, I was I was devastated. I mean, I am English, I am Yorkshire from Yorkshire, so I don't cry. Like I, I don't even have tear ducts. Tear ducts. Yeah. So I I never cry, but I wanted to when when I opened those books, I felt like crying. Um, and you you self published this. You didn't go with a publisher as well, so you had everything on yourself effectively. Then as yeah. Well. So it was self-published. So you, you've, you know, and you have to pay in advance. Yeah. So even before, you know, you've, you've even got a single book, you have to pay in full to, to get these, these books. And then the shipping is like a thousand dollars and it's, it's an expensive uh, process. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so all the books were complete garbage, wow. but luckily, and of course, I, I, you know, I had a lot to say about that <laughs> with, with the company that, that no did doubt. the, to, to their credit, they 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 said, okay, yes, it's not right. We we're really sorry, and we'll fix it, and we'll redo the order. And wow. that was huge expense to them to redo yeah. the order. Yeah. And they had to also pay for someone to pick up the old books, take them to a recycling depot, wow. get get rid of them, and it, you know, like the costs were astronomical, and so even though it took years off my life because of the stress of it because because mm -hmm. the problem is i was so excited to uh, to finally experience relief on march 1st when i could start sending out these books to people that were complaining where the hell is my book yeah. and i'd been i'd been sending people emails on the newsletter some of them didn't get it uh, most of them did and i was trying to keep people informed as to what was going on with the books because it was dragging on and on, you know. So I was just, mm -hmm. I needed to feel relief that they were finally getting shipped out. So when that didn't happen, and the, and the company were telling me it's probably going to be another month before you actually get these, these books proper, the proper books. And I was just like, it was another month of stress, of, of, of you know, fending off people that were complaining, rightly so, because people were yeah. frustrated and not as frustrated as I was, but they were frustrated. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, to, and to this day, that most people have got their books, but there are still a few in, let's say, New Zealand or Australia or some in the UK. I mean, your, your book arrived yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, I sent that two months ago. So um, right. here in Canada, we, we have this thing called Canada Post. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when I email people that email me saying, where the hell is my book? I have to say, oh, it was sent on May 13th and uh, Canada Post is quoting four to 12 weeks wow. for delivery. Tw 12 weeks? What are you doing with that book Snowboard for 12 weeks? <laughs> no, I think, you know, I think they do. And I don't, I, I have no evidence for this. I'm just making stuff up. But it seems to me like, okay, if I've given you that book, that box, and it doesn't get there for 12 weeks, Where's it going in between? So yeah. I'm thinking that they maybe just store it. They put it in a depot, store it for nearly two months, and then they send it out. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. they send it out the same way on that very last week that they would have done if you'd paid an extra seventy dollars to get it there in two weeks. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 I'm not saying it's a scam because I don't have any evidence, but it feels kind of like a scam. <laughs> it screams of a scam yeah <laughs> it smells a bit fishy but yeah, you yeah. know that's that's what we're dealing with um well, go on yeah yeah but some some of my some of my book buyers are in the states so they get their book or canada so they get their books uh really quick because i can i can fedex those it's within the budget for shipping but anyone else 
it, it just takes four to 12 weeks. And it is so painful because I want them to get their book as badly as they want the book to arrive, you know. Yeah. And, sure. and everyone seems, the feedback I get is fantastic. Everyone's delighted with it. Everyone loves it. There's even a little uh, puzzle for people to solve in there. And if you, if, you, if you solve the puzzle and you can email me the correct answer, you get to download a free copy of one of my online courses. So there's a, there's a lot to it, but yeah, it's been, it's been a labor of love. It's been very stressful. Um, but when I finally did get those proper copies in my hand, oh, the relief. It, it was, well, it was the relief and then it was the satisfaction, Yeah, you know, and then I had to get the signing I think 900 of them or something like that. It was something like 900 of them. I've got, I've got a really good signature now. It was pretty bad. So there's some people, the first ones to buy, I've got this book that's got a, just an atrocious signature, which that's probably worth more money. That's probably Yeah, more yeah, yeah. Collector's editions. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the last ones, the more recent ones, you know, perfect. Finessed. Perfect yeah, it's, it is. It's really finessed. And, you know, you mentioned there as well about, you know, you doing it all yourself. I mean, you had to take the books, I presume, down to the Canadian Postal Service, knowing okay. that, OK, I'm dropping this off today. The next time this is going to see another human being is going to be two months and stuff like that. So did you oh. did you drop them all down yourself when you were? Yeah, shipping them so out, yeah? It, it was me and Amanda did it. So it was, it's wow. really stressful because I think if you add up how much money I've spent on shipping them out through FedEx and Canada Post, it's something like $40,000. Wow. So I've spent <laughs> all of this money to ship these books out and they still haven't arrived. So I've got this massive amount of cash that's just evaporated. Gone. And loads of people still haven't got their books yet. And, and you know, Canada Post just say, oh, it'll get there. Don't worry. Just, just wait. Just and I, I obviously, I have to pass that on to the, to the buyer, you know, but... So far, out of all of the books that I've sent, there has only been two damaged books That's good. that I've had to I've had to resend them a new one. Two. So, but like I said, they haven't all landed yet. So we'll see. Ask me in about six weeks. There might be two more. But I think <laughs> yeah. that's pretty. That's a pretty good rate. I I thought there'd be way way more damaged books than that. But well, we'll I think see. you know the way the way you shipped it was quite good as well, though. I mean, you know, it was in the pizza box. I mean, but you also yeah. had it wrapped in bubble wrap, and I mean, you know, they're relatively strong by design, anyways. The edges you want to be worried about, and the edges were strong. So, I mean, it, re it reached all the way to Ireland, and there was no damage whatsoever to the box. I've had stuff oh, wow. that came from Dublin that looked like it's been trampled on by four elephants along the way <laughs> to me. So, you know, <laughs> they did well. In fairness, the whole thing arrived in in good steed. In good steed. Well, I'll tell Amanda that because she she packs them all. So she lovingly wraps every single book in bubble wrap. She puts that unicorn sticker on and she blesses them with her energy crystals, and then she sends them out. I kept mine. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, wa That's... I wanted to keep hanging out. I was going to see it with the light. No, uh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Yeah, an upside down one. But I kept mine because I said, that, you know what, that'll be worth money in years to come. Well, that, you know, that's Amanda's hands have put that on on your package there. There you so, go. <laughs> Careful. Oh, that sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean, sorry, I love. <laughs> and one final question there for you, I suppose, just before we go for a quick break, right? We mentioned about um, you wanted to, you know, have a book. And I, I agree with you. It is something I think which any aspiring photographer would love to be able to see their images not only printed because an image doesn't come to life until it's printed anyway, but a body of work in, in, in totality. Um, how long did it take you to put it together? And I'll go into the details after the break of how you put it together, but how long did it take you to put the whole thing together? Well, I mean, aside from the years and years that went into shooting the images, sure. actually, actually just writing all of the stories that go with every single image, it took two whole months just to write the stories. And then you have to go through spell check and grammar check. I had to send stuff off to my mother so that she could spell check things for me because my, my, my spelling is atrocious, you know. Mm -hmm, understand. Um, it, it took way longer than I thought it was going to take. It was a monumental task. And I swore once I finished it, I'm never going to do that again. But I'm already starting to think about my next book. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well, look, on that bombshell, what we'll do is we'll take a very, very quick break and we'll be right back because I want to get into the nuts and bolts of how you decided to put the whole thing together. So, yeah, we'll be right back after this. All right.
If you're enjoying this episode of the podcast, why not jump over to iTunes or Spotify and listen to the back catalogue that we have, some great episodes where we talk about photography, gear, and some excellent guests along the way. Thanks very much for listening and for watching. We'll see you in the next one. You're very welcome back to the Irish Photography Podcast. So, Gavin, I kind of want to get into the nuts and bolts about putting the whole thing together here. So, like, was it a hard process for you to decide on, you know, what images were going to go in the book and coming up with the whole flow and everything else. Tell me about the thought process you went through to put the book together. Yes. I mean, so the whole process of choosing the images, was that subtle enough? I think that was subtle. That was subtle. That yeah. was subtle yeah. The whole process of choosing the images was, was really time consuming because I've got hundreds, if not thousands of images that I've posted over the years. And the thing is, so, I mean, if you look at the book, right, what you have to do when, you, when you're making a book is you have to kind of think about what, they might not necessarily be your favourites. You've got to think about which images have, A, an interesting story to go with it, because a, a good book isn't, you know, a good photography book to me isn't just about the images. I, I think because of my channel and you know, the way that I do things on my channel, I think people right. kind of expected a bit more than just, they wanted an insight mm -hmm. into to the experience. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, all of these moments and these experiences are not just unique to me. Every landscape photographer who does what I do, whether it's professionally or just for a hobby, <clears throat> we all do the same things, right? So I knew that the stories would resonate. And so, you, you know, you kind of pick the images based on it's a balance it's like well that's not necessarily you know the best image but it works on a small page it works on on a you know in a book some of my best images that i personally love only work huge they only work yes. if they're you know six feet tall or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and some of my best images don't have a story and so that's the one thing i want to tell people who've who've got the book who've read it all of these stories are real and genuine and happened at that time. None of them are, I didn't like pick an image that didn't have a story mm -hmm. and then just invent one, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they're all mm -hmm. legit. And, and that's kind of like, that is going to be my challenge with the next book. It, it's like, okay, well, now that I've set this precedent. I have to top it. <laughs> well, you have to at least <clears throat> be able to continue that, that momentum. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have any stories, in the next year or two, and I publish another book, it's going to be a very different book, right? So, <clears throat> but I mean, there's always, there's always some shenanigans, you know, me. For sure. Yeah, for but, sure. But yeah, it, it, you know, I had to, I had to write these stories out and I had to work on my, my writing a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm an avid reader, but I've never, I've never studied writing. I did English literature in school, but I was crap. Mm -hmm. I found Shakespeare extremely boring. Um, yeah, me too. But, you know, I, I, I feel like I did a good job of the writing. I, I, the way that I judge it is, would I be entertained? Would I be interested in reading this book while I'm sat on the crapper and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going through every page? And would it, would it inspire me? Would it give me chuckles? Would I be able to identify with the struggles? And I think I, think I did a, a good job of that. And I know you've only had it a day. But I guarantee you, if you if you read that every time you visit the porcelain, something will resonate for you. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> well, I've read some of the stories already, and I actually I, I agree with you wholeheartedly when you're saying about you know the sentiment, the feeling, the humor, the actual you know the photo tripper experience. <clears throat> everything is all there to correspond to the image. And there was one story that I read there today on it, and you mentioned about, and it just so happens that a square crop worked perfectly good. And it also worked perfect for the book. And it's actually that when you think about the whole cohesiveness of everything coming together, the story, the image within the book. But then I think one area is that when you're picking the images, you're going to lay out the images as well within the book. And then how do you decide how you're going to lay out those images? Because there was one that you'd taken there with the, uh, the waterfall on the beach that you went there for a sunset and you wanted to shoot the Milky Way. But Amanda decided that she wanted to become a ghost in the middle of the night. And you've that as the next image straight after the book. So one flows onto the other. Yeah. They're both, they're both linked as well. So how did you kind of come up with the flow of the images 
to, to kind of have a cohesiveness on that? I think generally you don't want to have like three mountain shots together. You know, page after page of mountain shots is, is going to get kind of stale. Mm -hmm. So you've got to mix it up enough so that there's variation. If you jump from page to page and you read it in a, in a linear sequence, you need to have that variation. But then there are stories like that where, you know, it, it has you have to have that story on the next page. You, it doesn't work if you say, jump to page 84, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... But other than that, really, all I, all I wanted to do is just make sure that there was enough balance of eye candy with in, interesting and inspiring narrative and then variation throughout the book. Um, you know, some books, are, they've got a theme where it could be like seasons or you might have one book that's just all about trees, you know. But I, I wanted to kind of appeal to a, a wider audience with a, a, a huge sort of variety of different type of imagery plus it, it gets I think I would get bored making a book that was just like all trees or mm -hmm. all one thing so for me it, you know it, I had I had fun putting together the images it was just a very laborious to write those stories and, and the thing is once you've written a story the first writing of it's fun. That's loads of fun because you're laughing, you're reliving yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But then once you've done that first draft and then you're now going back and checking grammar and checking spelling and then rewriting it, then it's just it's just tedium, right? So there's a lot of drudgery work. If anyone out there is thinking of doing a book, um, the easy way to do it is to not have stories, you know, just, just have pictures. Just but if, pictures. You wanna, if you want to do this bit, prepare to put some hours in let me tell you that and you know you mentioned about stories and that picture that you just opened there is one of the stories that i read which is you mentioned about your favorite thing well not your least favorite thing is the instagram right so you've got yeah. people on instagram who arrive and they all rock up and they all get the images and you mentioned about something that's within that image which is somebody on a canoe going out into the water and it's like it's perfect because it worked perfectly well within the image but then you're also telling people not only the story behind it but also the settings and also how you took the photograph and, you know, you focus stacked for this because the light was bright in the top right hand corner. And, you know, you did a blend in the images here. So for the person that's picking up the book, yes, they're seeing the image. Yes. They're seeing the story, but they're also learning a lot themselves, yeah. I think, which is really valuable to be able to understand how the hell did he put this together? Well, again, it's a, it's a continuation of what I do on my channel. So you, you give them a bit of education, you give them a bit of inspiration, and then you give them entertainment, right? So that's what the book is. It's just a continuation of that. I, I, I think if I hadn't, if I hadn't put, you know, a bit of information about how I did the shot, I think people would have been, no, I don't, I don't want to use the word cheated, but they might have felt a bit like something was missing, right? Because that's what I do. That's in my videos, I'm, I'm transparent. Yes, I think I feel like as a person, I'm fairly transparent. And here's the thing: when you're an artist, let's put that book down there. Put it Only down for there. a second, mind, because you know it has to come back up subliminally again. Of course, it does. Yeah, there you go. When you're I'll an artist, over, yeah. right, and and you put yourself out there as an artist, you have a choice. You you can either portray yourself as this uh, mysterious, mystical artist and sort of try and create this this aura this cachet yeah. of mystery aloofness. yeah aloofness yeah which very few people can pull off mm -hmm. and if it's fake if it's a facade that facade will crumble and you will be exposed mm -hmm. or you can just be transparent and you just be who you are you know and and i'll tell you that's that's by far the easiest because it's not fake so you can maintain it right because it's real Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I decided to do with the book. I'm, I'm, I do want to be seen as a serious artist. I, I do want people to respect my work and take it seriously. But at the same time, um, I'm not going to be pretentious and yeah. uh, come across all mystical and, and mysterious because it's too late. The cat's out of the bag. If you've seen my <laughs> videos, you know, you know who I am and what I'm like. So the book is just more of the same, you know, but it, it does give you those finer details that you can't put in a video and that take a bit longer to 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 write down and create a story from 
than I actually have for doing videos. You know, videos are kind of rushed out to some degree mm -hmm. because you have to constantly pump them out. With a book, you know, it's a slow process. Every, everything that you see has been refined and tweaked. And it's a, it's a bit more of a polished product than, let's say, a vlog that I shot last week, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, people can study this and go back to it at their leisure, whereas you might watch something on YouTube, you might see this image and you'll go, okay, I took this shot here, you know, whatever, F16, 120 of a second, and I blend it for this. That's gone. Whereas with the book, you can look and you can actually see, and you can see the results of what you've done, because there was one image within it. I don't remember the place, forgive me, but um, it was a waterfall and you've got a, a, a one exposure for slow moving water another fast exposure for splashes of water that were coming out you've got light that's coming in the top and you've got these crisscross branches and yeah. when i first looked at the image i went wow that's a nice image but then when i read it and you could see i think you call it time blending if i'm remembering my things correctly yeah um, you know so you've got one image for the long exposure of the big waterfall but then you've got the splash of water that's jumping out and that to me explains why you did it because it was the best representation of what you saw when you were taking the image but also how you did it so you're educating somebody at a pace which is not the fast pace that we see on youtube it's at their own pace as you say on the, the crapper or whatever but they can go back over it look at yeah. the image and study that you know yeah you can look at it say okay he's giving he's giving me the clue as to how he did it and then you can you can take your time at your leisure you can even go back to it tomorrow and just oh yeah i get it right i see what he did there and uh I just think about what, what would I want if I was buying a photography book? Uh, what would I want? Especially, well, actually, it doesn't matter if I was a beginner or advanced. I mean, uh, advanced, I, I feel like I can look at anyone's image and know straight away how they did it. But, but for some people that are kind of like beginner to intermediate, you do need to know those clues. You, you do need to have those insights into how it was all put together because, I, I don't know, I mean... Again, it goes back to that air of mystery. You, you could keep all your secrets and be mysterious, but there's a million other people out there that aren't, that are willing to give away any secret. So why bother? Why don't you just be transparent and just help people along? And, you know, my, my goal has always been, since I started teaching photography years ago, my goal has always been to, to get everyone that I teach to a point where when, when it comes to technique, whether it's processing or whether it's the actual using of the camera, I, I want them all to be at such a level that there's now, no one even needs to question, how did you do that? They all know how you did it. Mm -hmm. And once you've got everyone to this sort of elevated state of skill, now the only thing that's left to differentiate your work from anybody else's is composition and, and to me that's what photography and art is all about it's how you see how do you render what you see uh, and and composition to me is it's it's a passion that's what that's the only reason why i've done all of those online photography courses in sure. composition is because to be quite honest with you it's the only thing that i'm excited to talk about you know, you, mm -hmm. I, there's a reason why you don't see loads of processing videos on my website because I find it boring. You know, it's it's boring to record and it's and it's boring to to learn. Even it's kind of tedious to learn. Mm -hmm. But but to teach composition is fun and to learn composition to me is is fun. So, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to get everyone to that state where, you know, they don't need to worry about how it was put together. And so by having this transparency and giving people these insights, it, it gives them that little clue to get them closer to that state where all that they have to think about is composition. A um, couple of quick fire questions for you. Uh, what paper did, did you uh, use for the book? Had you a choice in that? And why did you choose it? Oh, God, yeah. Um, yeah, I, did, I had a lot of choice. So basically the company send you this huge book and there's all of these different types of paper. I think it's called Garda Silk. So it's okay. kind of a very subtle luster to it. So I didn't want completely matte, but I didn't want super shiny either. So to me, it's that perfect balance. And, and also when you look at it, the pages that they give you in this book, every paper has a slightly different whiteness to it. Some are slightly more yellow, 
some are slightly more pure white and so colors render differently and all these different types of paper so the garda silk uh, just had a beautiful look to it everything was super sharp the colors looked great and i liked the sort of very subtle luster to it and one other thing i'll point out about the book is it's all made on what they call fsc paper which is like responsible forestry so apparently it's it's all renewable so every every tree that gets Fantastic. cut down gets replanted so it's not you know supposedly good for the environment we'll see yeah um okay and one other question i suppose is in relation to putting the book together i mean a cover the cover is very very important right and you know your book chasing all with gavin hardcastle it has to have an awesome image at the front and also more importantly you know it has to be superior to any other books you mentioned you know thomas's book and Ga adam's book um like you wanted to come up with something and go holy shit look at this this is boom yes. so what made you decide to have this incredible image as the, the cover image well i just want something that smacked you in the face and it um, <laughs> but but I also wanted something that looked kind of like you know I'm a I'm a fan of uh, movie posters. I really love movie posters, and I really yes. loved as a kid in the 1980s. We would go to the video store, and you know you, you'd pick up this VHS cassette, and it would be beautifully designed with typography, and it, it would just be set on the page in such a way that you'd be like, oh yeah, I want to I want to read that. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with the book. And then if you look on the back side, there's me in situ doing my thing, you know. So yeah, I just, you know, it's, um, you know, it, you just got, you have to pick an image that kind of smacks you a little bit, but also has space for typography. Yeah. And so yeah. that's, that's what I, that's what I think I managed to achieve. And I did all of this design work myself. So I'm quite happy with it, you know. Fair play. Yeah, no, it it, it all came together fantastically. Um, like, I suppose a couple of final questions for you is, number one, if somebody wants to get their hands on a copy of this awesome book, how can they get their hands on a copy? Not about winning one just yet, but where can they go to buy one? Where can they go to buy one? Yes, because that's the important thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just go to phototripper.com and you will be slapped in the face with... Uh, promotions oh. for my book you know i'm not so subtle on my website as i am in my videos okay and now right back to your forfeit so okay back to the giveaway so what we said we'll do is somebody can win i presume a signed copy yeah by yours truly you know i i would even dedicate it i'd, I'd sign it and i'd give them a little dedication i just need to know the name of the person and okay. so I'll, I'll put a little note in there for, for who it is Okay, so for somebody to be able to win a copy of this book, all they need to do is comment down below how many images are in the book. So we've saved it from earlier on. Gavin, how many images are in this incredible book? Now you're asking me. Um, 60. We'll, we'll say 60. Because if 60 I'm wrong, images. if I'm wrong in the, and there's 59, well, there's, there's one on the cover as well. So that's, that's your 60, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll say 60. the answer I'm giving is 60. So if they, if they write that down... And they haven't skipped ahead then yes. we know they've got it right we know that they actually watched the video okay and all they have to do when they're commenting is do not say there is 60 pages in the book just put six zero because anybody else then that wants to cheat will just go along and go 60 okay i'm going to write the same so just write 60 oh. and that'll keep the you know the aloofness of the whole giveaway as well and thanks yeah, very much for giving me the book you don't want to end up with a page full of 60, 60, 60. So I, I would say let's have a witty comment to show that oh, you've got a sense of humour and that because because I feel like you have to have a sense of humour to qualify to own the true book, story, right? Yeah, so we'll story. just maybe just 60 and then your own little sentence, your own little witticism, and you know that that proves that you're you're on board with this type of publication shenanigans <laughs> yeah well look we'll pick one at random as well we'll leave, we'll leave a go after a week after publication and then we'll pick a, a random winner and then we'll yeah. uh, send out that signed copy gavin it's been an absolute pleasure having you back on i've loved hearing the story of the book i'm really looking forward now to you know, getting my hands on a, 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 across all the pages so i can see all of the stories that go in behind it i think i'm up to page 34 so far and it's absolutely incredible so Thanks for uh, coming on. It's been your absolute pleasure to use your own line right back at you. 
No, it really has. It, no, it really has been your absolute pleasure. And uh, I'm sure that now that you have the book, you really look forward to those special moments on the porcelain like you've never looked forward to them before. I'm going to build a special shelf just for it. <laughs> the shrine. The shrine, yeah, the shrine. Yeah. Listen, man, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, sure, look, we'll talk to you soon. So from me in Ireland to you, and again in the beautiful, beautiful Canadian area, Schlong the Fall. All right, mate. Thanks for having me on. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Hey guys, if you dig what you're hearing, why don't you jump over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a five-star rating, and don't forget to share with your friends. With all that done, we'll see you next week, and remember, keep shooting.